Good. We can go ahead and get started if you want to start asking Joey anything. Okay, perfect. Joey, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Are you? Good, thanks. What were the past two months like? Up, down, up, down, up, down. Finally up. I guess past six months, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, it's been a roller coaster, but I feel like the guys is ready. We're all ready. We all know what we're here to do. And I feel like we're all on the same page right now. We're just ready to rock and roll. From August 11th to, I think, September 16th, in that period when you don't know, how do you practice when you don't know that you're going to play? Um, it's definitely hard because you don't know what's coming. You don't know if you're having a season. But at the end of the day, you got to be locked in because you never know when it's going to happen or when, you're, when your team's going to get called to play. So you just got to go into practice with the same mindset every day, being ready to play so you don't have to get ready. But how, what did you do? In that in that period in that month to get better and did you get better in that in that month when you didn't know whether you're going to play or not? Um, what I did, I really went deep into the playbook more because you never know. So I just studied a lot more, worked on my tape, worked on watching film, um, working on being more prepared. So when we do get that call, I'll be ready. <clears throat> All right, Audrey, go ahead. Hey, Joey, thanks for your time. Um, how, I'm wondering how you think you're a different corner now than you were a year ago at this time. Last year around this time, I thought I was ready. I'm not gonna lie, I thought I was ready to play. I thought I could be out on the field and mentally I wasn't. You know, I didn't really know the ins and outs of the defense as I do now. My body wasn't the same last year as it is now. I feel a lot better, stronger, faster. And I feel like I have a lot more understanding of the playbook. And that was a big difference between um, last year and this year. And who kind of helped you through that process then, Joey? Because, I mean, it is a lear learning process and you're used to playing all the time. Yeah, um, a lot of people actually helped me. Uh, my father helped me to, like, understand the playbook. Um, the corner room helped me a lot. Castro Fields, the leader of the corner room, he showed me the ins and outs. Coach T. D'Angelo, our um, assistant, like they all helped. They all played a big part of helping me understand and knowing the defense. So when I'm out there, I know what I'm doing. New Bias Wellborn. Hey, um, for you, Joey, was it a tough decision to decide to come and play amongst everything or? What was that process and how did you get through the point of where you knew for sure you wanted to be back and play this season? Um, it was always like, will I be ready? Do I want to come back? But it was always, I want to play with this team. I know what this team's capable capable of. And um, I'm here to play football with, with my friends and, uh, and family. So like, I was always ready. I was just ready for the green light and we finally got it. Bob Flounders. Hi, Joey. Thanks for your time. Um, I had a chance earlier this year to talk to Tariq Castro Fields and Terry Smith about you. And they all mentioned the same thing when they talk about your physical style. They talk about your length and your athleticism. Um, what does that enable you to do uh, as a corner? It's, it's rare to kind of have your kind of length and athleticism. What kind of advantage is that for you? Do you feel like on the field? And um, how do you use that to your advantage? Um, I mean, I use my length and speed on the field for a lot of things, but mainly my press technique is um, it's difficult for other for receivers to get off the line towards me because of my length and my speed uh, is also a difficult thing for them. So like around the whole field is a big problem for the wide receivers, I feel like. Audrey Snyder. Joey, kind of going along with your length, um, one of the things since you were recruited, everybody kind of said, we don't know if he'll stay at corner, if ever he'll move. Uh, do you still feel like that's your best position and you think long-term that's where you're going to stay at? Um, yeah, definitely. I feel like I'm a corner. I play like a corner. My, my technique is like a corner. Um, and that's the position I love to do. And 
And if I have to move out of, out of that position, I will. But right now, I feel like I'm at a good spot. So I feel like I'm good at this spot in this position. Mark Logan Rich. Joe, you said you came back because you knew this team, or you knew what this team was capable of. What is that? What do you think you guys are capable of? I feel like we all have our mind on the same goal. And we all are here for one job, and that's to win. And I feel like since we're all on that same page, that makes everything a lot easier. If we come together better and we play harder for each other and for our coaching staff and our teammates. And that's the big part of what we got going on right now. You bias Wellborn? Yeah, um, I know the focus is the first game, but how much when you look at that schedule in particular, you see week two and you realize what that could mean for your season playing a team like that potentially so early? Um, we really didn't think much. We really haven't really thought about it that much or me personally. I know the team hasn't because we're really focused on week one and um, we got Indiana and whoever week two is, Ohio State, we'll be focused on them after we take care of business on week one. And we're just going to go like that throughout the whole schedule, take every game one at a time. Audrey Snyder. Joey, when I was at your high school a couple of years ago, you were telling me about film sessions with dad back then and how they'd get pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Do you still watch film with him? And, and if so, what's that like? Um, yeah, I still, I still watch film with him when I have the time. I send him some of my stuff that I like for him to see or watch. And um, it's been great. He always gives me heads up on things I need to work on, on and off the field. And it's a, it's a plus that some players and some people don't get to have. And I take advantage of that to the extent I can. Bob Flounders. Joey, what are your impressions and what have you seen from uh, a couple of young wideouts? Maybe you've had a chance to go against them either last year in practice or or just maybe they're what they look like this year. Uh, John, John Dunmore and uh, TJ Jones. I know that you guys are trying to, on the offensive side, you have Jahan Dotson, but there's a couple of spots open. What have you seen from those guys? Um, those guys are amazing on the field. They jumped from such a high ceiling from last year to this year. It's, it's ridiculous. And there's a lot more guys. Um, you got Washington, a young freshman that came in, Keandre. Um, they're both putting a lot of great stuff on tape and film, showing that they're ready to play. And I'm proud for those guys to be able to compete at a high level so fast because it's a really hard thing to do. And not, and not a lot of people can. Lauren Mulfer. Hi, Joey. Sorry if you already answered this, but um, when has the competition been like in the cornerbacks room and how have you guys been able to kind of navigate that um, over this off season with, you know, the off season being so different than normal? Um, I feel like the corner room has been pretty good. I mean, we're all ready to, we're all ready to play. We all compete at a high level because we all want the best for each other. And I feel like that's across the whole room, including um, even even our um, leader of the room, Tariq, going all the way down to the, the youngest freshman in our room, Joe Johnson. I feel like we all on the same page on to get better and work hard. So with that being said, we're, I feel like we'll all be ready. Mark Wogan Rich. Joey, how are you like your father and how are you different from your father? Um, <laughs> I say um, I'm like with him with um, his talking place. I like to talk a lot just like him. And um, I feel like I play just as physical as him or I can be just as physical as him. And different because um, I guess the position wise, I feel like we're the same people, but just in different positions. Audrey Snyder. On a different note, Joey, um, the NCAA is allowing players to put social justice messages on their jersey uh, this year if they want to. Have you given that any thought? I mean, what would you like to put on your jersey? Um, what message would you like to make if that's if that's an option? Um, you know, I would like to put Black Lives Matter on mine because that means a lot to me. And I feel like all lives can't matter until Black Lives do matter. And that's my opinion on that. New bias, Wellborn. 
Well, um, you segue right into the question. Um, you got a career radio there, but um, for you, what does it mean to see that Coach Franklin has been so open to you guys being vocal? And what has that done just for your level of activism and social justice um, fighting? Um, that means, I mean, it means a lot to show to know that our coach is on our side. And to let us speak on how we feel about the situation, it just shows that he cares about how we feel and how the team thinks. And that's just nothing but bring the team together because we all understand what other people are going through. And to be able to talk about it and um, be free to talk about it is a big, big um, plus for us. Evan Patrick. Hey, Joey. So I wanted to ask you about your family, specifically your sister and your parents uh, in founding the Jasmine Center for um, Special Education. And um, I saw I read that you plan on majoring in special education. And I just wondered how the experiences in your life if leading up to coming to Penn State really influenced you to want to go in that direction. Um. Pretty much me just being around my sister my whole life and um, playing the big little brother role because she's a year older than me. Uh, it's been a lot, it means a lot to me and my whole family. And it just feels right to do that for my sister and for the other people out there that um, needs help, that need help or like can't get the best help they can. So um, that's the main reason why I'm doing that. Audrey Snyder. Sorry, just going off of that, Joey, is, is that still your plan major wise or is that, do you think you can make that work or? Um, yeah, that's my plan. And I would, and I'm gonna try to make that work to the best of my ability. And um, that's my goal. And that's the one thing I want to achieve right now. So like, yeah. And what has- I'm all in for that. I'm sorry, what, uh, what has your sister taught you? Um, she just taught me, like, she taught me about being more patient with people, being more loving and understanding, and um, not everybody has it as easy as the next person. So you just got to be more understanding and more loving and more caring. And that's the main thing she taught me. My parents did a good job of teaching all of us that to raise my own little sister, my big sister. Go ahead, Audrey. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I don't know. Um, if, I'm sure you probably saw the video about the number zero that Penn State released yesterday. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I feel like I feel like that's a cool new tradition that we brought to Penn State. And whoever's, whoever we think at the team deserves to wear that number zero should be able to wear that number zero and rock it with honor because they were the chosen ones to wear that number. And I feel like that's just another great thing that we have with this team. Evan Patrick. Yeah, and so going off my last question too, I read that you you want to take over your your parents' business and, and working with the the Jasmine Reed Center. And so I guess from your perspective, like when how did that come about, and how involved were you with your family and kind of helping get that started? Um. I mean, my mom had this plan since I was six years old when she first started her first daycare in Bakersfield, California, where we used to live. And ever since then, our whole family been involved with um, that whole process and that whole meaning to us and trying to help others, including my sister. So since then, I've been it's been a huge part of my life, and I would love to keep continuing doing what I'm doing with that. Just a reminder, we're using the raise your hand function. So if you have a question, just pop up your hand and we'll get you called on. Go ahead, Tobias. All right. Um, earlier I asked about like being vocal, but I mean, I don't think you guys have a more vocal guy than Lamont Wade. Um, what's it like sometimes when you see a tweet from his, you're like, oh boy. 
Um, I mean, I really don't think much of it. I feel like he's speaking his mind, and Coach gave him gave us the ability to where we could speak our minds. And I'm not but proud of dude for doing that and be able to speak up in front of a big crowd and speak what's on his mind because a lot of players are scared to do so. And that's nothing but big ups to him. Lauren? Joey, what's your relationship like with some of, um, you know, your classmates in the cornerbacks room, you know, guys like um, Ellis and Wilson and Hardy, you know, a bunch of you guys come in um, at the same time together. I mean, do you guys have a close relationship? Do you help each other grow or, and if so, in, in what ways? Um, yeah, those are my guys. We, we have a close relationship. We talk to each other every day outside of practice, inside of practice. Um, we try to help each other as much as possible, especially when uh, one of us is down or up. We try to talk to them. And if somebody's having a problem with someone, we're always there for them, trying to figure out what's the best next move. And um, I feel like we're all on the same page of what we all want to do in a corner room. So we're all going to try to work towards that. Gianna? Yes. Hi, Joey. Um, also in relation to relationship, uh, can you explain a little bit about like that relationship you might have had with Micah Parsons? Um, yeah, he played a um, big role into my um, freshman year. He taught me a lot of stuff that I wouldn't think I'll be ready for or put me on game to stuff that I didn't know I needed. And um, I'm nothing but proud of him. I'm glad that he did what he did. It was his decision. And um, just nothing but the best for that guy right there. Richard Scarcella. Thanks, Chelsea. Joey, uh, if you went over this before, I apologize. Um, but how difficult was last year? I know you got into four games, but I'm sure you're used to being in action. And, and how difficult an adjustment was that for you? Um, it was a huge adjustment. I thought I was ready to play. I thought that was my main goal coming in as a freshman and be able to make a scene and make a difference into the team. And, you know, sometimes it's just not, you're just not ready. And that's what I had to realize. And uh, me and Franklin, Coach Franklin talked about it not too long ago, talking about um, how I improved from last year to this year and how I thought I was ready, but I wasn't. And when you realize that you're not ready, you just got to do what's best for you and the team. And um, that's what I tried to do last year. And now I'm ready this year and I'm just ready to go. Gianna? Yes. Uh, so in terms, again, back to Mike a little bit, in terms of the defensive side of the ball, you know, the connection he brought to you guys and just, you know, on the field, off the field, in what ways do you feel like, you know, this, this season and in the future, you're going to be able to sort of replace that and maintain that connection that he brought? Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like the people that we have next up in line is ready to play. They've been ready to play. We recruit people that's ready to play. Um, Michael was a great player on our defense, but I don't feel like we'll miss a beat because we got players that's want to step in and be ready to fill that role. And um, yeah, I feel like we have great great linebackers that can do that. So we we're not worried about that. We're not worried about that. I feel like. Lauren. Um, Keen Ellis is a local guy for us. So I was curious, I mean, what ways have you maybe seen him improve over the past year? Um, I feel like he improved a lot over the last year. Um, his ball skills, him attacking the ball, his speed work, him being more physical than he already is. Um, he's a ball hawk. He goes get the ball where, wherever it's at. And that's a good thing. And I feel like he really improved from that from last year, which is amazing. And which is is and what is needed to this team. Rich. Joey, what did you learn about yourself um, last year and obviously since you've been to Penn State? And and what how important how would you describe the importance of this preseason for you? Um, I feel like I improved a lot last year mentally and physically. Uh, I feel like a whole new person, a whole different person. Uh, how I play on the field, my play style is different. And I feel like this preseason uh, also helped a lot with that because I have more time to reinflect and like work on the stuff I need to really work on, 
which was my craft and my more more of my mental. And I feel like with this preseason, I had enough time to do so. Lauren? What is one interesting thing about Keaton that people don't know that you think they should know? <laughs> one interesting thing. Um, <laughs> I'll say um, Keaton, Keaton's a singer. He doesn't say it a lot, but he's a singer on a low. He likes to sing a lot, catch him, catch him every day trying to sing something. Um, it's kind of funny when you catch him in the act, but yeah, that dude's a singer. Rich? Joey, how would you describe Marquise's personality and how would you compare it to yours? Um, I feel like me and Keese think a lot. I think I feel like we think a lot of like, um, we have that same mindset when we're on the field, get ball, see ball. And he done a real good job of doing so. And he taught me a lot of things um, to work on my ball skills even more. But other than that, I feel like I feel like uh, we are always on the same page with each other. And he's a cool guy to be around, a good, a good friend. Justin, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Joey, I asked Keaton about this too. And I just wanted to <clears throat> hear your thoughts. What areas do you feel like um, you really worked on or maybe made some changes to try to shore up that pass defense? Because there were some things last year, you know, in the second half of the season um, that, you know, you had some breakdowns and things like that. Where, where would you say you've, you've made some changes and what were some of the things you looked at on film last year that, that needed to be shored up a bit? Oh, yeah, you know, we, I looked at the film a lot and the main thing with us was um, drop passes. I mean, we, we missed opportunities to make turnovers where we needed them. And we've been working on that this whole um, off season and preseason. So I feel like with us continuing to work on that, we're going to make a big difference on the field this year. And that won't happen again. Tyler Donahue. Hey, Joey, thanks for the time today. Um, Wanted to ask you about this cornerback class you came in with last year, Keaton and Daquan, and uh, you, yourself, and obviously Marquise. How do you guys day to day push each other? Whether it's the practice field, film room, uh, workouts, how has that kind of made each of you sharper uh, along the, the the past year and a half? Um, we're all trying to compete. We're all trying to get that one. We're all trying to have that starting job. So we come in with a um. When our minds ready, ready to work every day, trying to get each other better because we know whoever he calls on will be ready and keep doing that. Like the whole corner will be ready when that time comes. Chris Garcello. Joey, can you describe or tell us what it was like um, to have a father who had the celebrity status that your dad had, who played in the NFL, obviously, and was it difficult to carve your own place? And what's the best piece of advice that he's given you? Um, it was it was a it was amazing to have him as a, a football player because he taught me a lot of the ins and outs that other people couldn't get. And um, it was kind of hard to carve my own name because um, my name is kind of attached to him. I'm a junior, so getting those questions about my dad and being a lot about my dad was difficult at first, but I re I finally realized like I'm my own person. He's his own person, and to make that difference, I just got to continue what I'm doing now. And um, one thing he always taught me was just to always work hard and never let the man next to you beat you, because there's always somebody else. Working. Tyler Donahue. Tyler, what was it like? Joey, you guys aren't going to have Micah Parsons on the field this fall, but, but what kind of impact did he make on this 2020 roster? And, and you personally, um, what you carry away from, from watching him go through the, the process of becoming an All-American last season? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you say that again, please? Yeah, uh, you guys aren't going to have Micah Parsons on the field this fall, but what kind of impact did he still make within this defense that you guys will carry with you? And then you individually watching him go through an All-American campaign during your freshman year, what do you take from that? Um, 
I feel like Micah brought a lot to the defense. He was a vocal leader on the field, and he made a lot of good plays. And I feel like the people next up could do the same thing. So I'm proud to see that happen. And to see him go off that year was amazing to watch. Um, I'm happy for him. And um, that whole last year of him going crazy was a nice treat. And I feel like I could be the next up to do so. And we'll try to squeeze in Dustin in this last 45 seconds we've got. Thank you. I wanted to circle back to something you said just about opportunities and takeaways. How much potential does this group with all you young guys have to uh, to do better in the in the takeaway department? How much how much playmaking ability is, is back there? Oh, man, we got a lot of playmaking ability in the backfield and uh, we just can't wait to show everybody. And I feel like we worked on it so hard and so much for so long that that we're not going to make that mistake again for that many drops because we made a real emphasis this year to work on work on. So come October 24th, we'll see. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. No problem.